Welcome to Story Lab. This week we're talking about peace, while we take a look at the story of a very courageous woman who raised the volume in a creative way to solve a big problem. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about peace, which is proving you care more about each other than winning an argument. Hey, check out this really cool song I found. Okay. Now I can't hear the music. Yeah, yeah but oh, my eardrum, Zeke. Hold on. It's a great song. Just listen no, to no, it. No, 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 no. It's, it's too loud. It's great. Just finish but it's it. It's too loud. Hey, finish. No. Just stop. 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 Yeah. Dude. Yeah. <sighs> We're totally flipping out, aren't we? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe we just need a breather before we totally go off the rails. That my friend, is actually what we're doing today. Going off the rails? Before we get too steamed, let's build a train. Trains? Rails, oh, I got it. Let's make it. We'll need a spool of 20 gauge copper wire, one AAA battery, six neodymium magnets a little wider than the battery, a dowel that's a little wider than the magnets, wire cutters, and some tape. Oof, I should have found all this stuff first. All aboard! Whoa, thanks Zeke. Let's do this. First, tape one end of the wire to the dowel rod. Like so. Then twist the wire around and around the rod to make coils. Make sure it's real tight. You want the coils to be firm and very, very close together. Hey, can you try and spin it while I hold it here? Okay. Make sure you feel the burn, kids. It's a nice forearm workout. <laughs> you feel that, Zeke? Nope. I do. My forearms are gonna be massive after this. Okay, now you can cut the wire. Okay. Now, carefully pull the coils apart just a little so they're not touching. So coily. Hmm? Oh, oh wait, before we go any further. Safety. First, this coil and the battery can get very hot during our experiment. And neodymium magnets are super strong and super pinchy. So make sure you have a grown up with you. So this is the train track? Exactly. Now, take your AAA battery and the magnets and stack three magnets on each side of the battery. It's a little bit of a struggle pulling them up. There you go. All right. Each side. Right on that one, side. Two. Perfect. All right. Now, let's get this train moving. And go. Push it a little bit more. <laughs> hmm. I think we've been derailed. I think maybe I can get us back on track. Aha. These two sets of magnets are attracted to each other. You say that like it's a bad thing. In this case, it is. They need to repel or resist each other. Why is that? Every magnet has a north pole and a south pole. To make the train move, the north poles from each magnet stack have to point in opposite directions so the stacks repel each other. You might have to flip them if they don't work the first time. Well, let's try it. There we go, let's try it again. One and two. Ready? All aboard! <laughs> so cool! Nice! Wow! That's amazing! Yeah. Science for the win! Yep, 
The battery is a source of electricity. The coil conducts electricity. And the magnets create a magnetic field, which is like the fuel that makes the train move. So the magnetic field pushes the battery. Exactly. Want to see if we can make our train turn? Oh, yeah. Sweet! Who knew repelling could be so attractive? Speaking of which, there's a guy who repels everyone in today's story. It's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of 1 Samuel, which tells us the story of the first kings of Israel. Saul, the first king over the Israelites, did not listen to God. So God instructed the prophet Samuel to anoint a young shepherd, David, to be the next king after Saul. After David fought the Philistine Goliath, Saul made David a leader in the army. David had so much success that all the people loved him. But Saul became jealous and tried to hurt David, who fled to the wilderness. But he wasn't alone. A group of loyal men joined him. While on the run from Saul, David and his men camped out in the desert of Paran for a time. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey, 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 everyone. A very rich man named Nabal lived in Carmel, near the desert of Paran. He had 1,000 goats and 3,000 sheep, and he also had a bad attitude. This is rubbish. Take it away. Uh, yes, master. Nabal's wife, Abigail, however, was wise and kind. Never mind him. You did nothing wrong. Now, it just so happened that David and his men were camped out near Nabal's flocks of sheep. The wilderness was dangerous territory where thieves and robbers often attacked. But David and his men kept Nabal's shepherds and flocks safe. Stop right there! While David stayed there, not a single one of Nabal's sheep was hurt or stolen. And at the end of the season, it was time to shear the wool off the sheep. This was a festive time for everyone. Nabal called for a big party to celebrate his success. David heard about the shearing and knew that he and his men had helped Nabal to be successful by protecting his sheep. So David decided to ask Nabal to share food and supplies with his men. Go up to Nabal at Carmel. Greet him for me. Say to him, may you live a long time. May everything go well with you and your family. David sent several of his men with this greeting and a request. But if they expected a warm welcome, ugh, they were mistaken. David says, when your shepherds were with us, we treated them well. Nothing that belonged to them was stolen. So please be kind to my men. Please give us whatever food you can find. Instead of listening to reason, Nabal roared. Who is this David? Many servants are running away from their masters these days. Why should I give food to men who come from who knows where? When David's men returned with this response, David was furious. Each of you put on your swords. David gathered 400 men to march to Nabal's home. It seemed that no one could stop the coming explosion between David's angry army and the stubborn Nabal. Uh, that is, until Abigail heard what was happening. David sent some messengers to our master, but Nabal shouted at them. David's men were very good to us. They kept us safe. Now horrible trouble is coming. Please see what you can do. Don't worry, I have a plan. Abigail directed her servants to load up donkeys. Let's see. Bread, raisins, figs, sheep. Well done. You go ahead. I'll follow you. Abigail sent the donkeys ahead with gifts for David. As she rode her donkey down the mountain, she could see David's men entering the valley from the other side. Everything we've done hasn't been worth a thing. I watched over that fellow's property in the desert but he has paid me back evil for good. Now I'll make him pay. Look, sir, there's a whole train of donkeys ahead. David may have been surprised by all of these donkeys bringing gifts of food, but he must have been shocked when Abigail showed up behind them. Who is this woman? She's the wife of the man who insulted you. Let me take the blame myself. Please don't pay any attention to my husband, Nabal. His name means foolish person, and that's exactly what he is. I'm listening. Sir, the Lord has kept you from using your own hands to get even. I've brought a gift for you and the men who follow you. 
The Lord will appoint you ruler over Israel. When that happens, you won't have to worry about how you got even. The Lord will give you success. When that happens, please remember me. Uh, the Lord has sent you today to find me. May the Lord bless you for what you have done. You have kept me from using my own hands to get even. Praise God. Go home in peace. I've heard your words. I'll do what you've asked. Abigail faced a difficult situation. She knew she couldn't make Nabal listen, so she chose to go to David instead. She stepped up with courage and creativity and stopped what would have been a terrible fight. The end. Wow, that was a close one. Yeah, Abigail kept her cool and was able to find a peaceful solution to a big problem. So what's our part in this story? Well, like Abigail, you can help others make peace when they don't see eye to eye. Maybe if your friends are arguing over what movie to watch, you could suggest a different movie that you all like. Or even a totally different activity. Some of my friends get very intense when we shoot hoops. So I try to make everyone laugh and remember it's just a game. Then we all chill out and it's fun again. What about the times when trying to make peace doesn't seem to work? Well, that's a great time to bring in a grown-up to help. Yeah, like a parent or guardian or teacher. The most amazing peacemaker of all was actually born into David's family line about a thousand years later. Can anybody guess who it is? Jesus. Jesus. That's right. Jesus made a way for us to be in relationship with God, no matter who we are or what we've done. And because of Jesus, we can have peace with God. And that fills me with peace. Same. Well, guys, it's been fun. Thanks for having me. See you next time. So here's the thing. You can help others make peace. Even people who sometimes repel you. Peaceful. I think we need a soundtrack. It doesn't have to be quite that loud. Ah, <sighs> perfect. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you next time. Peace!